Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have almost all the usual suspects. We have the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good to see you. We've got Tria putting in the reps, putting in the reps, Harris. Tria, how are things? Things are well. Good to happy see to you. Happy, happy to have you here. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are things in Sin City? We're good, man. Happy to be here. Good to see you. And last but not least, you know him, you love him. The brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. We've got a great topic for this week's Roundtable podcast. And if you are a Seinfeld fan, you are going to be overjoyed by our Roundtable discussion because we got nothing. It will literally be a podcast about nothing. <laughs> yes. I, mean, I don't think that's I, th- I, don't think I have a feeling, though, it, there's something is going to come out of it. And by the end, Tree will have a tip of the week and there will be some value that will be imparted to you, dear listener. What it's going to be, we literally have no idea. So if you're listening to this podcast- I said this was a bad idea. Keep keep your expectations super low (laughs) for this podcast. I'll tell you what, though. I did have an interesting email, which I I could just bring up. So um, someone in flight school had read Dirt Rich. And emailed me, hey, I noticed that you got started going to tax deed auctions. There's an auction in this county in Florida I want to go to. I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds like an interesting idea, but I don't recommend it. And and the reason I, I brought it up in Dirt Ridge is like, that's how I first got started. But we've evolved since then. And now we want to get those properties before they go to a competitive tax deed or tax lien auction situation. So my question, dear panel, is given where we are in the market today, would you recommend going to a tax deed or tax lien auction? Eric Peterson, let's start with you. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. This does not sound like a podcast about nothing. This (laughs) sounds like we got baited into this podcast without knowing the topic. I mean, none of us signed up for this. We all signed up just to roll. Now you're throwing a topic at us. I'm bringing a topic because we have to talk about something. Even Seinfeld had a show about, it was still about something, even though it was really a show about nothing. Like the, the show still had a, a like beginning, a middle, and an end. Seriously, we've been duped. But Eric, what do you say? Yeah, we have I mean, been duped. I, I totally agree. But you are as as. Like uh, like the curmudgeon, like like George's father, <laughs> and now the feats of strength. Why would I you got bash a lot of Eric problems like with you people? Why would you bash Eric like that? Uh, <laughs> Eric, start yelling serenity now. Uh, boy. All right. The funny thing is, like, like Kate's generation has no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, you know this is over my head right here. <laughs> Got nothing. I I have nothing. <laughs> so I saw Seinfeld once. It was funny. Tax <laughs> deed <laughs> auctions. <laughs> let's get back to tax deed auctions. Let's let's move on. Um, so I've never I've never been to one. Um, I know people that have, and um, I guess the reason I've never invested a lot of time in you know, kind of going or figuring out how to acquire properties using that methodology is because I just, from what I've heard, the competition is pretty fierce at those events. And, um, you know, if, if you're going to do it right, you're going to do some research beforehand. You're going to invest a significant amount of time to know what properties you're interested in acquiring. And if you come out the other side with nothing, you've spent an awful lot of time to get nowhere. Whereas, you know, the method that we teach today, sending offers in the mail 
it takes a little bit of time to prepare that list and have your VA team, you know, upload that to LG Pass and, and all of that. But um, we do, in a sense, kind of beat the competition in, in the sense that, you know, we're, we're talking to these people that might not care about their property anymore prior to that, those properties going to tax deed auction. So it gives us a little, I guess the competition that we're going to see is going to come from other offers arriving in their mailbox. But the reality is, um, even though they may be receiving other offers, it's not as much competition because it's it's really, in my experience, it's, it's more about being in their mailbox on at the right time. Okay. That could be, it arrives next Friday and, you know, they just, they're ready to sell that property. They just saw the tax bill and they're like, I'm not paying this thing. Why do I, why do I even keep this property? I need to sell it. So I don't know. That's, that's my thought on it. I think it's a really good thought, but I'd love to hear what Sharia putting in the reps Harris thinks. Um, like Eric, I've, I've never been or participated in a tax auction. I have had, um, other land investors who have, and they thought it was great for them. I would imagine it would depend on the county that you're in. Um, the county that they were in seemed to be a little easier to navigate the system and get your offers in. But then I've also heard horror stories where the county website was awful and it's just difficult to get in there and negotiate and navigate. So I I wouldn't be opposed to it if, if things got extremely hard and the system in the way in, the, in which the way we're doing it now, all of a sudden didn't work. I wouldn't be opposed to trying that, but we get accepted offers all the time back. And I just don't feel the need to have to go, you know, do extra due diligence before I even purchase a property. Um, Cause that's time and money spent. So for me, I wouldn't be opposed if this stopped working. I don't see this ever stopping um, in terms of working for us. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I I totally agree with what you said. I, I want to play devil's advocate. I want to be the Kramer <laughs> of the round table. You know, recommend going to a vet instead of a do regular doctor. But no, uh, we have to move over to, I, I love the fact that Tate's not getting any of this, this inside baseball at all. <laughs> um, Tate, what about you? Tax deed, tax lien auction, would you go? I have, and I would definitely consider it. Um, I agree to what everybody else said. It certainly requires a little bit more homework ahead of time. And if you don't have a lot of time to spend on the land business, it's probably not the best use of that limited time due to the competition, due to the upfront work, due to the circumstances around it. However, you know, it is another method to acquire land. And I see nothing wrong with it other than the work associated with the potential of getting nothing. I think you got to be aware of the fact that it's going to cost you more. There is going to be competition. In most cases, you can attend these auctions online. So that's one thing that has significantly changed in the last 10 years, which is beneficial to all, um, but it does allow more people to participate, which is going to increase the cost, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. And to Eric's point, if you're spending all this time up front doing the research, then you're getting a hotel room and a flight or driving. You're spending more time and money to even show up to the auction. That being said, you could also hire a bidding service to do it for you. But most people aren't going to have that kind of volume. You're going to have to show up with cash, by the way. So you have to go out, you have to have you know, cash at the, at the ready. So you guys have to go to the bank and have... Uh, cashier's checks ready, made out to the county treasurer of that of that choice, and then you've got a bid, and it's competitive. So, oftentimes you'll find that you're overpaying. So you don't want to be the person in the puffy shirt in the back of the room, being accused of a, being a close talker or a low talker, and not getting any property, for sure. Uh, Scott Todd. Are you going to play devil's advocate here and say you love going to the auctions? Well, okay. So 
I think it's important to, to remember or to recognize that there are two different types of auctions. You've alluded to one and Tate's alluded to one. And specifically the one that you just alluded to, which is actually going, you know, entailing, you know, booking a flight and staying in a hotel and driving and doing all this other stuff. That's one form of it. And to some extent, I mean, like that, that is competitive, but it's not as competitive as what Tate referenced, which is the online auction in Florida, for example, because I think you mentioned at the beginning that they said that the auction was in Florida, should they go? Now, Florida does have, um, you know, live auctions, but not, not many. Most of them are online. And the thing about it is that it's just that you can seriously have anybody from anywhere in the world bidding against you. And what I find often, oftentimes what I find is that the going price of these properties at tax deed auctions, especially of late, are actually more like retail prices. And so, you know, what you have there is you have definitely you have the the neighbors go in there to bid against you. Um, and they don't, they don't care. They're not in it from that component of it, right? You have people that are just, you know, happy to to acquire anything at, at any price that they perceive is less than the value of it. So maybe the prices of the land is like, I don't know, $18,000 a retail price. I'm just making a number here. And, you know, people are happy to buy it for 15,000 or $14,000. So I think that you get much better deals by going to, um, by going directly to the, to, to the uh, buyers by mailing to them as you do getting them from the tax deed auction. I mean, clearly there's something exciting about auctions, right? Like there's something that gets you going that you want to like, it, it, it becomes a fever pitch is what it becomes. But at the end of the day, you know, I think that a lot, oftentimes, oftentimes you end up spending more money and maybe, maybe in a re uh, recessionary environment or a crash environment, it wouldn't be that way. But in times like today, not recommended. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, if, if you want to get your, your adrenaline going, besides obviously binging on on Netflix, some Seinfeld, go to Vegas, right? Because it, there's a difference between speculating and investing. And what we teach is an investing protocol. It's 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 it's, it's basically we're buying this property is twenty five three cents on the dollar, and we know that definitively. You don't know what you're going to pay it, it, to Tate's point, an online auction or uh, a live auction. It's going to be competitive. And then you're going to be speculating and you're going to feel compelled to overpay, which is like the cardinal rule. That's the only way to lose money in this business is literally to overpay. So why on earth would you spend valuable time on this inefficient way of acquiring land when you can just get it efficiently straight from the seller who no longer wants it is is my point now to scott's point and i've actually experienced this back in 2010 you can get deals let's say 2010 2011 in a market where nobody seems to like the land business anymore right i think those days have, are gone i think there's there's the you know there's just too many people now I think that that know this business, and even in a in a recessionary environment, they're still going to want to buy property, and they'll show up, right? I, I, it's it, it won't be as competitive as today, but it's still going to be competitive, and you're still not going to be you'll still probably be, it's a seventy five cents on the dollar, it's still not twenty five three cents on the dollar. Um, Scott, would you disagree? No, I, I mean, I think that, uh, I think it's, it's not, an, it's look. there's still deals for us, but I think that when you, when you can seriously just buy land from anywhere in the world, um, it's easy, right? Like it's easy. And so right. again, I don't, I mean, I don't know what the future will hold for tax deed auctions, but there's a reason we don't really talk about it. It's not like we're using it as some secret, uh, channel. It's just that there's, it's just not there. It would be the equivalent of us. Like we don't talk about selling land on eBay either, right? Like at one point in this podcast history, we did. And at one point we also talked about Craigslist too, but we don't do that anymore. Why? Because the market changes and markets evolve 
And, it's, you know, it's not saying that we won't go back and start talking about that, but it's just not relevant. Uh, it's not prevalent today. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think back in the day, I spent, I sold hundreds of properties on bidforassets.com. I, I never talk about bid for assets. But go ahead, Tate. I mean, I was just, just going to say, take the path of least resistance ultimately. Right. And, and there's something real satisfying about doing a mailer and getting a response there. It's pretty easy to do. It's easy to process. You've got a little bit more time. Good communication is all that is really needed to keep your buyer kind of intrigued and, and knowing that the property is, or the, the sale is moving in the right direction. And I don't know, it, at the end of the day, that's kind of what we preach and what I want to continue to do personally, just it's way easier, way less stress. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're looking for a way to get more properties and you don't want to mail, I don't know. I, I think we've done a couple podcasts on a, a little method that we call wholesaling. I mean, just why, why not buy it wholesale? You eliminate the entire front end of the business. You don't have to send out mail. You don't have to get a list, you know, scrub a list, you know, price a list. You don't have to go through the the one or two seconds I think it takes to upload a list into OG Pass. I don't know, Scott. How long is it taking now? To map uh, your fields? For, like after it's all set up. Uh, I mean, I don't know seconds, man. Like not. It's. I mean, it saves. If you use the same list every uh, same list headers every single time, it saves it. LG Pass saves that for you, so you don't even have to match it up anymore. You just have to hit some buttons, three buttons, and then. You got to wait there. It takes about a minute to get it queued up. And then after that, let it go. So I don't know, like actual work involved seconds. You know, if you want to sit there and wait for it to watch the little bar go across minute. All right. So we can eliminate a minute of your life by not having to send out mailers and, and LG pass. And then, you know, you buy it 50 cents on the dollar and sell it 90, hundred cents on the dollar and you make your margin and you've avoided the inefficient work of doing due diligence on a bunch of properties that you may never be able to acquire, the inefficient work of, you know, a, 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 an actually competitive, you know, environment where there's no guarantee you're going to get that property. So it just it it comes down to our simple business philosophy: if we can always make more money, we can't get more time, and we might as well do it the most efficient way possible. So I don't know. What do you think, Tria? I like it. I, I agree that you can set yourself up sometimes in auctions because it does become, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. So that's something I would need to very much. So be cognizant of if I ever went to one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Eric in, in Franklin, Tennessee, I, I'm sure there's livestock auctions that you attend all the time. You see these ranchers over, overpaying, right? I'm sure it happens. I've never been, but uh, but yeah, I think <clears throat> I like what Tate said. It, it's it's about the path of least resistance, right? And that's that's why we teach what we teach. And even beyond that, when we compare, you know, the potential inventory from tax auctions compared to all the properties across the country, right? We have access to so much more the way that we mail. Um, granted, not every one of those properties is going to be for sale when we send an offer, but certainly some of them are. And, and that's how we successfully acquire land over and over and over again. It, exactly. And there's, there's no shortage of it at all. So it just, again, seems like an, just an inefficient way to try to acquire property. But I have to say, I was really impressed that this person read the book and, and uh, you know, thought, oh, well, this, this is how, like, I'm flattered. This is how Mark started. Maybe it, it'll still work. But things do evolve. Things do change. Markets are constantly changing. And to Scott Todd's point, you know, we're, we're not talking about eBay anymore, which is, again, how I, I started as well. Uh, I thought this was a great podcast about nothing. 
Well, but I it think turned you out to be something. Had something. You had something. You had it. Like, <laughs> Scott, I did not have a. To- I did, literally did not have a topic. I mean, I you feel just like you think I railroaded the topic. Right off the bat. <laughs> How much time do we spend before the podcast trying to come up with a topic, and we had nothing? Four and a half minutes. <laughs> right, four and a half minutes, <laughs> and then magically you have it. Boom! I'm just saying. Okay. First of all, you you can see in real time Tate's blood sugar, like, you know, lowering here. We don't have a lot of time for these podcasts. I, I mean, are, are you are you saying that Tate is getting hungry from the rib hanging out of Eric's mouth? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I, the, the proverbial rib. It's possible. Perver- it's definitely rib. possible. Okay. Yeah. For those of you, okay. for the for the for the three of you that. Actually, you watch this on YouTube. You can see that Eric doesn't have a, a rib in his mouth. He's but, looking. I was looking. looking to see if I could find something that could function <laughs> as a rib, but it's not there. All right. Well, before we get to Tria's tip of the week, I do want to just remind the listeners, we do have a sponsor, and it's Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up the mountain of land investing quickly safely, efficiently, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times. And that flight school tuition ain't going to cost you nothing guaranteed. Just show us your work. You're going to make it back 180 days or less. But the first step is schedule a call, learn more about it. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training, get on a call and find out if this business is right for you. All right. Sharia Harris, what is your tip of the week? So my tip of the week is for specifically those who are posting pictures on Facebook. And Facebook does not like for you to post the same picture. So we have these tips that we do, these little tricks we do to generate new photographs. So I had a VA who used to... we tell him which pictures, you know, folder we wanted him to change. And he would do that. However, I found a website that is called befunky.com. B as in boy, E as in echo, funky with the Y.com. And it allows you to bulk load hundreds of pictures and like change the color saturation all at one time, change the size all at one time. So you're not having to do it individually for each picture. So the free version doesn't give you the color saturation. So it's, I think, $60 annually or $9.99 a month in order to get all the bells and the whistles where you can bulk change pictures hundreds at a time. That's a good tip. I thought so. Wow. Tate, what do you think? I can see you intently looking at your screen. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking at it. Is there there's a is there a limited how many you can edit it in a single month or is it unlimited? It's unlimited on the upgraded plan. You know, these are great tips because it's something that all marketers struggle with is, you know, we can't afford to go out and get new pictures of the same property 10 times. So you have to learn how to get creative and recycle images and this is just one of those tools that you can basically go in there, resize it, you know, with some other tools and then change it up a little bit and make it unique. I love it. And for 10 bucks a month, this is a no brainer. The fact you can do it in bulk too means a VA could do it all for you. In one swoop. I like it. It's even cheaper. If you fork out the $60, it's like fifty nine ninety nine or something for the whole year. I, you know, we could do a whole podcast just on on pricing, right there. What we that's, that's that, that no, I mean, just just how to be irresistible. Like that's an irresistible offer, right? Nine ninety nine a month, so it's a, it's like basically fifty percent off to just pay it for annually, which mm-hmm. is really the, the smart way to do it. That's a whole other podcast. We'll talk about that another time because we're we're starting to get low on on, <laughs> on ideas here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I thought it was a great tip. And uh, if you're getting value, please do us three little favors. Follow, 
rate, review the podcast. Send a screenshot of your review to support at the I'm going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. And you know what I might also start doing? If you leave a review, I might actually start reading out your review and give you a shout out in real time because I think it would just be good for all our fragile egos. What do you think, Eric? Would you like that? Go for it. <laughs> just kind of read it like Andrea 1927 says. Yeah. Eric Peterson's the best no. land geek and my favorite. If they're about me, skip them. You can read the ones about yourself. <laughs> no. No. The, the, well, of course I'd read them. The, 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 I'd, I'd handpick those ones. For <laughs> sure. You know. And then, and then any ones that did not mention Scott Todd. Let's see, like you can oh, see man. how much Scott, Scott doesn't care. Yeah. You know, but anyways, after this will be the feats of strength. So no worries. <laughs> not, not a problem. Anyways. Uh, thank you listeners. Please do it. It's a, it's a huge favor. And uh, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring.